Hey y'all, I'm Todd Bailey. What's up? It's Ari Lumberdozy. And this is fucking brutal. Get in the pit, stock up the fridge, and listen. We're here to cover the latest in metal news and craft beer. A match made in hell. If it makes you bang your head, then we want to hear it. If it tickles your taste buds, share those suds. Turn it up to 11. Crack open that beer. It's about to get brutal. What is up, Hop Wolves? It's your boys, Todd and Ari, coming at you with episode 80 of Brutal Podcast. I love that, dude. We we didn't really talk about that. We're we're hitting our milestone, 80 episodes. That's what is up. You guys are keeping us alive. We love it. Uh, Hell yeah, brothers and sisters and people. Yes. And happy Pride Month. I'm actually just going to go for it. Uh, Happy Pride Month. Happy Donut Day. Uh, (laughs) Maybe celebrate both on the same day to start things off. Get a good rainbow sprinkle. Yes, sir. Can't Uh, go wrong. Let's actually talk about what is your favorite kind of donut? (sighs) That's a good question, dude. Um, I I am a big fan of of the classic sprinkled donuts, uh, but the sprinkles have to be like the long ones, not not what some people would would refer to as the jimmies, which are just the little round ones. I don't really like to fuck with those. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't know people referred to them as that. Yep. I, it might just be a Pittsburgh thing. I don't remember specifically. Uh, but yeah, if you get the round sprinkles, those are Jimmy's. Fuck that. It's gotta be like the nice long ones. Um, yeah, I, I would say that that's probably my favorite. I, I really like like a strawberry glaze with those on them or like something Mm -hmm. like something like kind of fun color. But it really doesn't matter. That would be my go-to, though, I would say. Pretty standard. How about yourself? I think I, I do love, like, a, a classic, like, glazed donut. Like, if they do just the right amount, like, it's yeah. perfect. Kind of melt in your mouth. But I am also big on, like, jelly-filled. <laughs> I don't oh, know, yeah, for I, sure. I don't know why, but, like, I'll I'll do kind of any kind of jelly. But stra- strawberry jelly, usually that or, like, a berry flavor inside but i love the whole like it's kind of interactive with the tree yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it, it gets like kind of tricky though because sometimes you're you're just cruising through the donut and you're like dude where's like this jelly at? then all of a sudden fuck dude nothing worse to ruin your day than a glop of jelly just falling on your clothes uh damn that straight are, that are the, i actually i used to like powdered donuts I still do to an extent, but I hate how messy they are. And it's just like you got cocaine everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel the same way. To get off the topic of donuts, people are like, what kind of podcast is this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell me about your weekend. It was Memorial Day weekend. Uh, so, yeah, what were you doing? What were you up to? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it short and sweet so we can get to the, the meat and potatoes, if you will. Uh, Skylar and I got to see our old friends, Fred and Shelby Vogel. They are, um, if you're into like extreme horror, like underground horror, Fred's a staple in the scene. I, so Shelby, they've been like, they've been married for years, but they've done many movies together. And Fred was the first person that I like was my, my first real connection to film. Uh, I interned him when I was interned for him when I was in college and we've been friends ever since. Uh, love friend Shelby, super good people. So we went over there to their house for a, a barbecue, which was really fun. So thank you, Fred and Shelby, if you're listening, can't wait to see you guys again soon. So that, that was really cool. Sky, I would like to say stole the show with her. Uh, I just want to say jalapeno, her jalapeno cornbread and these kitchen sink cookies that she made, which Ooh. were both dude amazing if you've ever had the kitchen seat cookie from panera skylar makes it 10 times better it was awesome and then lastly before we get into what todd's been up to this week uh, i'm super stoked because shout out my buddy dustin who has helped me out immensely on eerie times he was in the movie he scored the movie he also works at black circle he's like bartender promoter he, he does all sorts of shit but I'm going to be screening Eerie Times at Black Circle Brewing um, in a couple of weeks in June. 
with uh, another documentary, which I'm not super familiar with, but it's all about like an indie record label. So like, I'm pretty stoked for that. Uh, so yeah, that'll be June 21st. I'm, that'll be really cool and get to see some indie friends. And Sky and I haven't been back to indie together, uh, you know, in almost a year. Mm. So those were the highlights. I said that was going to be fast and it wasn't, never is. But <laughs> what about yourself, sir? I, I know that you have a new addition to the family. Yes, I'm actually surprised she hasn't interrupted yet, but uh, she might finally be sleeping. Uh, Plenty of time still. Cherish those cat naps, man, because uh, she's yeah. a she's a bundle of joy and energy right now. She's she's really young. She's almost like uh, two years old. Uh, we got a new cat. We named her Maya. Uh, her uh, shelter name though was Blue Bonnet, which was which no. was adorable. But no, uh, we named her Maya after the month of May, which we got her. Uh, no. Tell them the real reason. Well, I mean, there's a band that exists that you might know called Bale and Maya. That yeah. uh, they, I think they're cat people. They had a cat on Mother. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a safe, safe assumption. But yeah, she's she's been acclimating to a household. Uh, she was picked up as a stray and dropped off at the shelter. So she's, I don't think she's ever been in a place before. So she's kind of. Feeling it out. Uh, we also have another cat, Charlie, who I, they're butting heads a little bit, but uh, they'll soon enough they'll be cuddling. Who knows? <laughs> uh, beyond that, though, uh, been hanging out with the Austin crew. We did some pool time on Saturday and then or Sunday. It was one of those days. It all blurs together. Right. But we did grilling on Monday, actual Memorial Day, which was nice. Uh, Kelly, he recently got a new grill, so he got to fire that up and test it out. Fuck yeah. Propane, if you're wondering. The only way to grill. Exactly. Uh, Hank Hill would be proud. Uh, As you know, I bring up video games every once in a while. I am playing Street Fighter VI. Uh, Go add me. It's the Todd Man out. (laughs) But I'm kind of pissed at Capcom right now because... I ordered a certain edition. I did not get that edition oh, on, on launch day. Right. So, yeah, either give me my money back or <laughs> fix the problem. So we'll see what's up with that. This isn't just me, dude. I am on the Reddit threads. I'm on Twitter. It's everyone who got the ultimate edition. Oh, really? Yeah. So we'll see what happens, man. But I, I have to believe they fixed it. I, I put in a request detailing what the problem is. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a hard lunch. But uh, I'm super pumped, man. Uh, ever since we talked about Mortal Kombat, I've been getting in more into fighting games. I've played Street Fighter since I was a kid. Played it on the Game Boy. Love the movie, oh, yeah. actually, with Jean-Claude Van Damme. That movie still holds That's up. That's a classic. Yeah, I love it. So I might I might watch that later. Who knows if I can't get the, the game to work. But it's about to be some real life street fighting pretty that's, soon. That's right. I'm just going to walk outside, start street fighting. With with a donut. Don't forget the donut. Have, yes, I'll eat the donut, have a little sugar high and then start swinging. <laughs> but they're like, I'm, this motherfucker didn't get his ultimate edition. Anyway, I'm super excited. They have a new cast of characters, uh, along with the classics, of course. Of course. And because I'm bringing this up, we'll do it in our discussion. Just, but we'll make it quick. Who is your favorite, if you had to choose, for Street Fighter? For me, it is Guile or Dulcim. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, you know, honestly, I do like Street Fighter, but I did not get into it as much as some of the other fighters. Uh, Tell me I this. Who do you who do you like in Mortal Kombat? And I'll tell you who you'll probably like in Street Fighter. Oh, <laughs> uh, Scorpion's my favorite in Mortal Kombat. Mm. I could see you being a Ryu fan. OK, yeah. We'll go with that. Who Who's the. Um, I don't know. I guess I did. I like Chun-Li, too. Yeah. But There's... who's who's the green guy? It's like oh, something Blanca. with a B. Blanca. That I would go. With, he's probably my favorite. I would always be him whenever I I play Street Fighter. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I always like asking that question. Kind of. Yeah. 
there's always everyone's got a favorite that's the thing uh that's what makes fighting games so appealing is like you you know who you like you know how to play them yeah absolutely dude and and street fighter like i said i didn't get into it as much but it's a great series i think i was if it wasn't mortal Kombat, which came later i was more into um to tekken oh yeah just having having a playstation and uh that that was like one of the first fighters i i kind of remember playing well besides the oh my god it was like it had something to do with beasts on it Dude, anyway bloody roar it probably was bloody roar yeah oh man that brings me back i don't know fighting games aside like everyone's yeah. got their favorite i'm just excited but also have the Ar- arthur fist hold tight right now on what's happening but uh I'm going to drink it off. This is our, our segue go. to our beer reviews. Here we go. I'm going to start because Ari again beat me, but not by too much this time. Not by too much. It's pretty close. Yeah. Although I'm very excited for this beer. So let me let me hold up the can. It is from Martin House Brewing Company, which is becoming one of my favorites down here in Texas. They're from Fort Worth. I have their Daybreak Four Grain Breakfast Beer. It's 5.2 ABV. It's a, like I just stated, it's a breakfast beer. Uh, the can is mostly blue. Uh, they pretty much the, the whole background's blue, but in white is Daybreak with our logo, which is like a little bird. I think it's like a pheasant or something, probably something native to the area. And then four grain breakfast beer is all in yellow. So that's kind of the, the main colors is blue, a yellow and white. Uh, if you turn the can around though, it's got like two people like crouched down near like a campfire on a mountain. Uh, okay. and it's, they're kind of silhouetted, so you can't really see details of them, but the sun is rising. So that kind of ties into daybreak. And uh, I just think that's kind of cool. Uh, I've actually never had a breakfast beer before. So this is the first time. I'm going to hold up the glass. Got to get the, the glass logo out of there. Uh, yeah, I mean... It looks amber as hell, and it. Let's get a smell here. Oh, that smells good. Definitely smell the grains, but I don't know what to expect flavor wise. Uh, this is per untapped. Right. They say this four grain breakfast beer is modeled after a bowl of cereal. Okay, uh, it's made with barley, wheat, oats, and rye, and finished with honey and milk sugar. Interesting. Okay, uh, nice. it, has, it has a bright and dynamic flavor, unlike any other. Okay. That actually made me more excited reading that. Here we go. Let's get one off the tongue. Oh, I like that. I think they nailed the concept. Ooh, the honey sneaks in at the end, especially. Dude, it's almost like if you had a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios and you poured milk in and you kind of just let it sit for a little bit. Uh, yeah, this, yeah dude. this is good. This is really flavorful. Mm. Once again, I'm thoroughly impressed with this brewing company. I have no excuse now. I, I actually know some people in Fort Worth now, so I have to go visit and we got to go here again. Once again, recommend for sure. I am. I'm okay. I, I'm surprised because when I got COVID back during the pandemic, I couldn't, I had so much tea with honey in it. I, I loathed honey after the whole experience. So I'm shocked. I'm right. loving this because I swore off honey. Maybe it's making a comeback. Maybe it's like, okay, don't, <laughs> Years don't, later. don't give up on me. So yeah, hell yeah. I'm, I'm happy right now. I'm cause I have a full glass of this beer. <laughs> That's what's up, dude. It's uh it's pretty cool that, um, that that type of breakfast beer because normally when i think of like a breakfast beer i think of a breakfast stout specifically founders because mm, that's yeah. one of their staples uh so that's really cool because it's it's not a stout and it sounds like it's hitting a lot of like different flavors that you wouldn't normally get from because because i think really like the breakfast stout is just from the the lactose like it just being like really smooth and really creamy mm-hmm. so that sounds delicious and yeah dude you you had nothing but glowing things to say about Martin House, so you gotta fucking go. There's like you said, there's no excuse anymore. 
my Cut end of the year uh end of the year top five is probably gonna be all them because yeah. they, <laughs> they keep showing up at the uh at heb their local grocery store here uh in texas uh they're a big chain around these parts but they do pick sixes and uh i don't know whoever's stocking the shelves must be a fan because they they keep adding uh martin brewing company martin house brewing company i should say gotta market them right yeah get your shit together dude high fives to whoever's stocking and doing the ordering cheers yeah that's cheers what's up to y'all. yeah cheers to y'all all right bourbon let's go <laughs> perfect segue dude see they do they 80 episodes we're finally starting to get it i i definitely look forward to whenever i can enjoy martin house with you one of these days until yeah. then i'm very excited for the one that i have today as well and that's always something that's um that's cool for us on brutal when when both of us are super fucking stoked for the beers uh but what i have today is juice bomb from sloop brewing it's a really fun looking can dude mm-hmm. it's a uh it's just a plethora of some nice warm tones. So you got your reds, your yellows, and your oranges. Juice Bomb is right front and center. And uh, what I really like too is it says Sloop Co- Brewing Co. Presents. And and I just really, just because it makes me think of film. But yeah, dude, it's it's got like a lot of like nice like stripe action going, like an explosion, I would imagine. And then if we turn it, there's like actually a little like orange with a fuse on the side. I and, love that. Uh, some birds and whatnot it's it's really fun i really like the look of this can and most of their cans look like this like same slanted font same font type and you've got the logo down below uh so that's really cool and and that's definitely a thing that draw me to it even though i was telling todd off camera that i have had this beer once i believe and it was on tap and but this was a couple years ago uh so basically new what we have, though, it is a, uh, a Nipah New England style IPA, so it's going to be really thick and hazy, which all about that fucking shit. It is 6.5% ABV. I couldn't see the IBUs, but I don't know. I'd say probably we'll, we'll go around like 50, 60 ish. Seems about right. It's a good price, is uh, right, guess. <laughs> Sign me up. I was going to say Bob Barker, RIP, Drew Carey now. Hasn't been Bob Barker for fucking years. Anyway. They are based out of East Fishkill, New York, which is a fucking awesome name. Hell yeah. Brutal as fuck. The description was like very straightforward on the side of the can. It just says all the citrusy, juicy flavor of American hops. Love it. Short, sweet to the point. Uh, But the real reason why I chose this one and oh, there we go. Uh, Shout out to my wife, Sky. She had brought up since it is Pride Month and she's like, well, I wonder if we have any breweries like at, at our local beer distributor that are associated with like LGBTQ plus per an article really fast before I get into the beer itself. This is coming from hop culture, really big fan of that, that site and what they do. Uh, but this was a whole article on queer led and queer supporting breweries. So they said in the summer of 2020 sloop brewing did something particularly unheard of up until that point, they started the open waters internship program and internship aimed at giving black queer women and other minority folks a chance to get to gain experience in a brewery. Oh yeah. What a fucking cool concept, dude. Uh, helmed by uh, Marquita Reese, a black female queer brewer at Sloop, who also serves as the chairperson of the brewery's diversity and inclusion committee. The internship, the internship program has broken barriers in the industry. That's what's fucking up. Uh, for example, Michelle, Dematillo, a queer woman of color in the brewing industry, accepted an open position in the program. We hope that for years to come, more queer and minority individuals will have the opportunity to dismantle the barriers in the craft beer industry and pave the way for positive change in the world of brewing and craft beer by creating a more diverse and inclusive industry. Uh, and that last part is per Sloop's website, which is the whole point of Sloop's groundbreaking innovation their initiative i should say not innovation and yeah we we just the the article closes it out saying that we hope more breweries will take sloops example and start something similar in their spaces so that was really cool and that was really the the driving point to picking this particular one so i'm excited to try it again 
Like I said, mm-hmm. it's been a couple of years, but let's crack this bad boy open. Dude, I invite them because we talked about donuts today. Uh, make, yeah. a bre- make a breakfast beer that tastes like that donut with sprinkles. That would be sick, dude. I know they just did one for Pride that had like, I don't know if it was like the, the edible glitter in the beer as well. Oh, I'd have yeah. to look it up. But it was it was like a really cool thing that they were doing for Pride. So maybe that's on the docket. Who knows? I also saw that they did a collab with Jägermeister. So they're doing a lot of really cool different things. So cheers, Hot Wolves. Happy Pride Month. Again, happy National Donut Day. Yes, sir. Let's get it. And I would say it's also like I can smell the hops like fucking bursting through the seams here. Juice bomb, if you will. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, talk me through what uh, what flavors you're getting. I'm it's assuming, just, assuming citrus, but <laughs> yeah, I mean that that is the driving flavor for sure. It's just really in your face with the flavor. It is like it. It's it. I feel like a, an explosion is happening in my mouth right now. Oh right, no! Oh yeah, dude. I. <sighs> I'll start bringing glasses on again. The last time I brought a glass on, I fucking broke it or something like that. But mazel tov. <laughs> mazel tov. Um, I know, I know like seeing pictures, it is like exactly what you would expect from uh, New England style Anipa. So you can't see through it. Just thick, hazy. And uh, it's not like, it is like a thinner body, which is cool because sometimes they get like a little bit too thick. And, and that's not what I was hoping for with this particular one. I was hoping for like the flavor to be really in your face. And it totally is very drinkable, dude. I like this one, dude. My only thing is like, I, I took it out of the fridge too early. No, no. And I know that like, this is best served like cold. And, and I can tell that, but no, dude, the flavor is there. The bitterness is like really just like kind of sitting on the, uh, the front end. So the tip of my tongue, but it is very, it's pretty crushable though, dude. I, yeah, I, I recommend it. I, I knew going into it, I was like, I'm pretty sure I liked this one before. And uh, I've heard nothing but good things about Sloop. I like saying Sloop. Yes. I like this beer. I like what they're about. I like the can, dude, the whole thing. Recommendation from your boy here. Dude, cheers to having breakfast in the afternoon. You have the OJ. I got the, yeah. the cereal over here. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Which, which I mean, like going back to last episode, I think you had a bowl of cereal and I barely ate anything. So we're right on point per usual. We're we're at that level we need to be. Uh, we're going to keep it moving uh, to let it roll. That's so good. Uh, metal headlines. Uh, I'm going to let Ari lead this off, but I'm so pumped about this. This is a fun one. Yeah, dude, like it's it's always fun. Like the last we talked about Bless the Fall last time. So like this, this is a little like, quote unquote, lighter as far as what we would normally talk about. But that's even better. So Mm -hmm. we're both big fans of the show. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. Season three just came out this this past week. And uh, I, I know we were talking about it. One of the highlights, the very first episode, there's a there's a zip line sketch that's have so fucking funny dude i I already watched it like a few times (laughs) it's uh if anyone's unfamiliar with the show it's like really cringy humor but if you're into that highly recommend it like the rewatchability is there they're like really pretty um like bite-sized episodes like it's about Mm -hmm. 20 minutes but there's a few different segments in each one so even if you're like having a hard time with one segment like they transition out of it pretty fast but yeah big fans but what's even cooler is the band turnstile which i actually just saw this past not this past week no it was this past week it was with blink right yeah yeah damn dude i forgot all about that (laughs) not that it was a bad time it just feels like that was a couple weeks ago dude perfect time to bring it up though yeah it, it was blink sounded better than ever dude like i know we talked about it before Saw them about like 10 ish years ago and they sounded it was it was like a way better set. It was it was a great time. There was one woman in front of us that was on some shit, dude. Like she was drunk as fuck and also fucking peed herself, which really just shows like how. But she she was like standing on the riser, like in front of 
me, Brandon, Sky, and Danielle. So that was annoying. But everything else was great. Uh, the venue was a little weird. That was at Hershey Park. They have like a their own like little stadium section over there. Not a stadium, but a uh, pavilion, basically. Mm-hmm. But anyway, like Turnstile was cool. I'm not like a huge, huge Turnstile fan. Brandon is. But they were really good live. And it, that's a weird setting to see them in. A spe- like Brandon also said, he's like, dude, you got to see him in like a smaller venue, like a more intimate venue. See, that's what I believe, too. Yeah, like but a t- like that, like a tiny desk situation. Absolutely, dude. It's just like you want to move, you want to, you want to dance to it, and when you're in those like bigger shows, you, I mean, just especially when you're in the fucking bleachers, you can't do anything. So, but they they were great. Like they they did a really good job. So this what we're getting back to turnstile has debuted a new track on I think you should leave. Tim Robinson, I guess, is a big fan of the band, That's and there's a couple. There's a couple other bands like in the same vein that I wish I could remember. But if if we remember, we'll link in the show notes, but we'll put this article on there, too, uh, for the website NME. So the show launches third season of the stream on streaming services this week and its fourth episode, which I haven't personally seen. And I don't think Todd's gone there either. Yeah, I haven't yet. I'm like, I think I, I think I just finished episode three. So I'm like on the cusp. And there's only six episodes. It's super short. The episode features a song by the group called The Everything You Knows, who are made up of Turnstiles, uh, Brendan Gates, Pat McCrory, Daniel Fang, and Franz Leon. Their song Listening is a catchy slice of alt-rock reminiscent of Blink-182, who Turnstile recently supported on their comeback arena tour in the U.S. Uh, So that's really fucking cool. I don't know, like, the last time that there was a band that did something like this. Like we talk a lot about like early two thousands and like the metal soundtracks for shit. Like we were talking about matrix reloaded yes. not too long ago, like queen of the Dan, like stuff like that, where you'd have original songs for the, the movies, which still happens, but like, you just don't really hear, at least I don't hear bands like turnstile doing something like this. So whether you're a fan or not, like that's pretty fucking cool. They've grown on me a lot. I don't know if you're a fan of turnstile or not, um, but but what are your thoughts on on this whole collaboration going on? I do like their new record. I haven't gotten into it as much. Uh, like you said, Brandon's a huge fan. I've just been listening to angrier stuff. So Fair. Uh, that's to my own like mental state. But uh, I I appreciate what they're doing and how big they've gotten because they I, I kind of see this moment with them as. Because they've been on talk shows, they've, you know, have yeah. this. A lot more people know about them, which is cool. And I think that's such a, a great gateway now, sort of like when a data or a member was on Jimmy Kimball. Like, yeah, it's just that moment that this is going to make so many more fans get into like hardcore metal. So I I love what they're doing. And I love that. Uh, what, what's the showrunner's name again? I always forget his name. Uh, you said uh, Tim, Tim Robinson. Yeah, I, uh, that's awesome that he's a fan. That actually makes it me respect him more. So you're gonna watch this. You listen to Turnstile. And then you're gonna zip line over to our playlist. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're just here for the playlist, and uh, that's fine. We're gonna get into it right now with the albums that dropped this week, and then we'll get on to our certified brutal bankers. You know how what it do, Hot Wolves. Let's do this fucking shit. We're starting it off with Affect with Theory of Mind. Atlases with Between the Day and I. I actually I didn't realize this was even coming out today, so that's exciting. Uh Event Sevenfold, Life is But a Dream, dot dot dot. Uh then we have Brain Dead with Misery Volume 1 EP. Then we have Cadaver Carnivore. With Devouring Eclipse of Darkest Realm, Dead Vectors with The Grey, Dethroner with Taunt, that's an EP, Deeth, To Hell and Back, Conningsor with Death Process, and that is also an EP. Then we have Null in brackets uh, with their Fencewalker EP. That's an interesting name. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Um of the Betrayer follows that with Your Darkness Will Save You. That's also an EP and 
True. Uh, Omnium, Gatherum with their Slasher EP. A lot of EPs this week. Mm-hmm. This one we've both been excited for. People Slicer with Blossom and perfect timing for when that is dropping. Uh, then we have Queen Kona with All Hail. That's also an EP. Scarnival, The Hell with M. Then we have Semper Acer Bus. Hope that's correct. With The Heart and The Machine, another EP. Shadow Tooth with Liquid Sun EP. That just makes me think of a uh, like a Capri Sun, like those old yes. '90s commercials, and I'm fucking here for it, dude. I love those commercials uh, and dude, Capri Sun. I thought the exact same thing when I saved it on Spotify. That's fucking amazing, dude. I hope the new whatever music video is coming from that EP better be like a '90s Capri Sun commercial. Shadow too, just the Silver Surfer goo. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've got the last three rounding out the list with Spy. Their Satisfaction album, To Descend with Mindless Birth. That's another EP. And then finally, World I Hate with Years of Lead. All right, dude. Lots of good shit per usual. What's doing it for you this week? First and foremost is that Brain Dead EP, dude. Uh, Fuck yeah. It is top of list right now for EP of the year for me. Like, I just love the sound. I love that they lean into the bass drops. Everything about it, I'm just here, here for, and it's heavy as fuck. So can recommend if you're wanting something brutal for your, your weekend to listen to. Other than that, uh, I have listened to a few of these. Uh, Dead Vectors is always bringing it. Yeah. Another good one. You know what I actually haven't listened to yet, which I'm looking forward to, is Pupil Slicer. I kind of have saved that oh. in my in my pocket just to listen to later. So I'll probably do that later tonight. Nice. Queen Conus. You got a lot of shit going on. Oh, I know. I too many things. <laughs> uh, Queen Kona is really fun. Spy is actually like a really good like kind of metallic punk record. Uh, so it's kind of cool to include that. World I hate. It was actually really good, and so is a <laughs> effect, effect, however you say it. And last but not least, I am going to talk about Event Sevenfold a little bit. The singles have been some par. If you view them as singles, when you listen to this album as a whole, it all comes together, and you kind of get what they're going for, and it is kind of like tongue-in-cheek, if you will. But... The talent is still there, but it's it, it's certainly a different form of this band sound. I, I texted Ari this like a, this moment in their band's history is kind of like when they released the self titled because it, yeah. it is just out of the wheelhouse, pushing boundaries, very progressive, and even on iTunes it's listed as rock. So they're they're kind of branching out there to where like you're like, is this metal? Is this not? I don't think they care. <laughs> at this point no i saw one reviewer say this is batshit crazy and for a good reason and i i love that they included a bat because of their logo uh so it is bat bat, yeah it's batshit crazy uh mattel is heavy as fuck that that single alone so two tracks mm-hmm. in you're gonna get hit with a good slab of metal uh i even heard m shadow scream Hey, he's bringing it's been a long time. Yeah. So it's a mixed bag for sure. It's a mixed bag record, but like those singles weren't doing it for me. But when I heard it in context of the whole thing, I'm like, oh, okay. And it's a concept album. So uh, read up about it. You might get into it and then it'll click for you. But it is certainly not for everyone because any old heads that are thinking, oh, Avenge Sevenfold is finally going to go back to what I, Waking the Fall and all that. Hell no, they are still going very much in that same direction, which is away from that sound. So I don't know. I I am always impressed with this band because not only does this make metal more accessible to listeners, I I feel like this is going to draw a lot more people into the genre and maybe get more fans. So I I view it as a positive and I I love that they keep continuing to push uh, what you could call metal. Yeah, dude, I agree. I listened to, I think, like four tracks of this new one. And because uh, say what you will about Event Sevenfold, I know we're both like still pretty big fans of the band. 
of course, would love to hear like another City of Evil or their self title. I mean, Waking the Fallen is is my personal favorite, but this was fucking cool, dude. Like, I had a lot of fun, and even that opening track was a lot heavier than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess at this point there really are no expectations for what the band does. Cause like you said, they just kind of do whatever they want and, and they've definitely earned that right to do so. Um, so is it the most brutal? No, but is it worth checking out? Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're in a day and age where we have stuff like this and, you know, you get sleep token, which not in the same vein, but like kind of similar wavelength. That record's um, been growing on me a little bit the more I listen to it. I, I really love the track Vore, which was released earlier, but like I'll never I won't knock it. Like the fandom gets a little much. Yeah. That'll knock. It's like, all right, chill out a little bit. But I, I do appreciate what they're doing. I feel the exact same way. I, I haven't really given the record its due diligence, but just because like a lot of time I just need like a little bit more energy mm-hmm. from it. And, uh, but anyway, like there's a lot, there's a lot of cool things in there and, and I definitely am a fan, but am I going to listen to it every day? Absolutely not. Neither here nor there, but what I will listen to every single day is brain dead. Mm -hmm. That shit is fucking dope. Dude. That is my, my pick as well. I love it. I also love that they got, I'm blanking on his name. So forgive me, but the, the front man of uh, breakdown of sanity Yes. Which is so fucking cool. Uh, I know we've talked about that band before, but that that's like an older band that just fucking rips, dude. And they don't get talked about a lot. At least I don't think so. Uh, so that was really cool to see. I love that EP, dude. It's, like you said, the, those bass drops, I was fucking loving every second of it. Mm-hmm. Super fucking cool. Uh, and the only other two that I like listened to in full were Quincona's EP and People Slicer. Queen Kona was a lot of fun, dude. My only gripe with that EP is it's only five songs, and then they have, like, the five songs, the instrumentals for those. Uh, oh, I don't like that at all. I Yeah, that that felt like kind of, I wouldn't say a cop-out, but I was hoping for a little bit more because they released three out of the five songs as singles. It might have even been four. Um, but regardless. The, uh, I was going to say I love the artwork, too. I have to put that out there. Yeah, the artwork really threw me off because it was so different than the single artwork, mm-hmm. like any of the singles. Like they all kind of had like a similar vibe, even though they were about different things. But it's like this big, I think it's like a pit bull yeah. um, on there. Wait, yeah, it's really cool. I, I really enjoyed the EP. I, I just wish there weren't the instrumentals like that, uh, but it's still fun. Uh, and Pupil Slicer is really fucking cool, dude. It's very different than Mirrors. Mm-hmm. Um one of the standout tracks to me, which I, I'm not even sure what the name of it is, but it's like in the middle of the album, sounds like a black metal Ooh, track. Okay. It, it's dude, it's really fucking cool. So they still have like the the chaos and the craziness of mirrors, but like that's not the driving force like it was for that album. Uh so there's like a little bit more structure for it. It still goes super heavy. But there's a lot more melodic elements to it. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I had a really good time with it. And I, I like People Slicer a lot. So, yeah. all the At least what I've heard, I'm excited to, of course, listen to the rest of them. I did listen to a little bit of Dead Vectors, uh, which, like you said, they, they can do no wrong. They're consistent uh, as fuck, which is crazy because they release so much. Yeah, true. But also, like, they've got some different stuff on this this new one too like a little Mm -hmm. bit more melody and stuff like that so yeah a lot a lot of cool stuff dude but uh what what do we got for the the cbb this week let's go man yeah certified brutal bangers uh we are starting off with the eradicator from a band called abhorrent abomination the name alone just sounds heavy so uh and it lives up to its name yeah. After that, we have Callisto Disaster. That's the song title. It's from the band Hell Let Loose. Once again, pretty much in par with the the name sounds heavy. The band is heavy. After that, we have Memento Mori. This is US uh, with their song Narcissist. Then we have Squelching, and they're from Oklahoma. And their song is called Mangled Fuck. And 
<laughs> that was almost our number one, but hey, and it, it's really this whole playlist is heavy, so don't worry. Yeah. Next up, we have God Tongue with their song Calcium Waste. Then we got Missouri Quiet with their song Kill the King. And as Ari pointed out, uh, the first two minutes are kind of a buildup, but the payoff is fantastic. So wait, wait through that intro, and then you're going to get hit with a good slab of metal. After them, we have The Hate Project, uh, and they're blessing us with Malevolence. The song title is Blessed with Malevolence. I love it. They're a really good band, dude. I'm, I'm pretty pumped about this single. Yeah, yeah, likewise. Uh, next up, we have two brutal alumni, which is dope. Uh, we have Necrotted uh, with their song Ignorance is Fear, and this is featuring members of Abbey Falls and Defocus. After that, uh, we have Throwback, and this is featuring members of No Face, No Case. And their song is called Iscariot, and it's I-S-K-A-R-I-O-T. Both are fucking bangers, man. I love what they're doing. Uh, This next one has a member of a brutal alum. Uh, So the band is DVST, and it's featuring Acker of Consumer. uh, And the song is called Opportunist. Really fucking heavy. I love that one. Yeah. After them, Victims. We always love to see them. Uh, this is featuring Josh of Orphan. Uh, you'll you'll hear it when he comes in. He has a very unique yeah. sound voice within the scene. Yeah. Uh, their song is called Feed, Feed the Vice. After them, we have the band Throat uh, with their single Death Rattle. And this is featuring Evan Foley of Famous Last Words and then Alex Sati of Shoot the Girl First, which I've never heard of that band before, but I'm like, all right. Dude, that I, sounds like, like uh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I actually thought this was going to be a little bit more seen and we're yeah. going to get singing in it. It has no singing, dude. And it, it is heavy as fuck. So, uh, hell yeah. Kudos to y'all who are involved with that. Next up, we have Waste out of Minnesota. Uh, they are featuring Chris Whited of Body Snatcher, which is their drummer on their new track, Neon Gods. This band gets better and better, dude. I love the new vocalists they got, and they're just going into a whole new territory with their sound. So, hell yeah. Yes. After after them, uh, I'm just going to say that's my favorite of the day, White Moth. Never heard of this band before, but uh, they just released their track Separation, Bouncy, and Fun. That's all I can say about it. It's just the energy with it, man, gets me going. It does remind me a little bit uh the riff of an Amir song, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it, for sure. Uh, after that, we have Impact of Thea uh, with their song In Reflections, and that's uh, combined together for one word. After that, we have the band Burner with It All Returns to Nothing. Then we got Salt Wound with The Company You Keep. After that, we picked The Game from Code Orange. Uh, they released two singles, but I like this one better, in my opinion. I agree. After that, we have the band Throne with their track Guilt. Uh, that is a band to keep your eye on. That's all I'm going to say. They're doing good stuff. And this one, I love the, like, uh, the I don't know if they have a rhythm guitarist or not, but the rhythm in this song is really fucking good. Like, it, it, it yeah. just flows. After that, last but not least, we have the band No Home with God Won't Forgive You. Once again, another great day. Dare I say the heaviest playlist we've released <laughs> thus far. Every week is the heaviest. It's the weight, man. The weight gets heavier and heavier. Um, like I said, I, I already named my favorite, so I'm going to hand it off to Ari. Uh, what uh, were you leaning towards? What have you listened to? And uh, what were you feeling? I had a tie this week. For, for two that really stood out, um, Impact of Thea. Thea. I know. I keep trying to say it. It's spelled, that's, that's a t- yeah, it's spelled T-H-E-I-A. So we'll leave it to our listeners on how to pronounce that. Yeah. That was a really cool track. And, and there's a lot of like different sections to it, which is really cool. So it does bring the heavy, but there there's a lot of melodic elements to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was really sick, but then the squelching, dude. Yes. Uh, I I also love that it's from like Oklahoma when the okay because it's just like I'm squelching fucking okay, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, in my mind, that's what it is. And tongue in cheek aside, like dude, mangled fuck is exactly what you would expect it to be. It's got that really like dingy, like dirty sounding production. 
with like really tinny drums. So it's like it's more death metal produced, yes. I think, but it is a deathcore song or like more along those lines, which I love, dude. It just feels filthy. And Todd sent this to me like the other day as like, dude, you could just fucking feel like it oozing with just nastiness. And and you can, dude. And he also pointed out like the uh, the single art's really fucking cool, too. It really goes with the track. So those two really stood out to me. But other highlights, of course, are our brutal alumni, Necrotian Throwback, coming out with some of their strongest material to date. Fucking super cool. Uh, and Necrotian, I know, is leading up to a new album. Yeah. Pre- pretty soon. Like, I think it's summer release. So that's that's always exciting. And um, what was the the uh, the Born Abomination is basically one fucking huge breakdown to a point like there's the build up, and then it's probably like two ish minutes of just straight fucking yeah, amazingness. You're, you're going to get pounded at the beginning of this play over and over and over again. That one was cool. I love everything a throne does. Uh, shout out to Buster Rotom. That man is so fucking talented. He, he plays drums in this band, but I think he plays drums in Humanity's Last Breath, too. But he's in that band. Oh, no and shit. He, he's also in uh, Vildharta as their guitarist, also songwriter. So, like, the dude knows the shit and produces some of the best fucking stuff out there. And and Throne's more hardcore, I would say, than stuff like Vildharta, Thal. Uh, but anyway, Love Buster, love what Throne's doing. God Tongue's stupid fucking heavy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I really could go go on and on about the list, but those were the ones, dude. I, I will say I'm very happy that Code Orange is back and and like really took Code Orange form. Yes, dude. There was a lot of releases. I didn't care for the WWE entrance music. I didn't no. really care for I think it was a live album. Uh, the Out for Blood was more like a rock track it was okay i don't know i wasn't uh, i loved underneath yeah so when, when, when that dropped i was like oh fuck these guys are on the cusp of like being at the forefront of like what's new within hardcore and like mixing in like industrial elements and then it kind of just like hit a plateau for me with their sound and this is just me i mean there's there's fans that have been writing it out but uh, I think like you to your point is I'll wrap it up is that I think this is a nice return to form and it's also still something different. Yeah, dude. I, and really, I, I think you're you're about online with another like with a lot of other fans I saw on Reddit. Someone's like, dude, I'm so fucking excited that there's no more butt rock coming from Code Orange. <laughs> like they're coming back to this shit because like, yeah, it, it was kind of like where, where are we heading to? And I mean, they've become super popular. But it's just really nice that, you know, they, they still got it. Yeah. Not th- I don't think they ever, like, didn't have it. It's just, like, that wasn't what they wanted to do. And so that's fucking cool. And the way they did it, too, dude, um, Masters of Marketing is amazing. I can't get over that YouTube video, but, hey. Yeah. You get what they do. What At the end of it, if you watched it, you're like, oh, I get why they're doing this. <laughs> yeah. We'll link that in the show notes if the Hopples haven't already seen it, but uh, it, it's pretty fucking good. But what's also pretty fucking good, dude, is our featured band this week, dude. Yes, sir. We're talking about Ghost of Elher. Uh, we talked about this track last week mm-hmm. since it, it it did it dropped last week. Uh, we're recording on June second for for reference. The track we're featuring is called Cursed Land. So, of note. These are this is Rust Belt fucking beat down, dude. So not beat down. It's it's like symphonic deathcore, but you know what I mean. They're from our neck of the woods, eerie PA. So we're always stoked to feature people from our hometown. But the band is consisting of Trevor, Nick, Garrett, Dan, and Adam. The bio that they provided for us says Ghost of Elher started as a solo internet project by vocalist Trevor Dunlap. A year into the project, he decided to form a full lineup and shift the sound and direction of the project. There's no specific genre for the band, but we take inspiration from deathcore, black metal, symphonic metal, grind, and even dungeon synth. 
Love it. So you'll be able to hear all those in this track here for sure. So about the track, again, this is Cursed Land and coming from Trevor, the vocalist, he said that Cursed Land is a different song for us. Whilst the song is heavy, like any other that we've released, the lyrics are about my home. I come from the oil region of Pennsylvania, specifically about 30 minutes from Drake Well. This was the birthplace of the American oil industry and its curse. Mm -hmm. While every item we, we own contains oil in one way or another, the substance has created greed, corruption, and war. So the oil region of Pennsylvania has been poverty stricken since I was a child, and we can attest to that. Very true. Which I, I think Trevor is a little bit younger than us, but about the same age. Yeah. So, so that makes sense. What was once blooming with business opportunities and comfortable families has turned to condemned homes, an ongoing drug epidemic, and unemployment at an all-time high. Our elders bled the local land dry of its resources, and we've been cursed to carry the burden of what they destroyed. This place is not our home. That's heavy stuff, dude. We we talk a lot about heavy shit here on the podcast, but but we haven't really delved into the environmental impacts of what we're doing. So this is really important stuff, dude, especially for us. Th this is also our home. We're, we're from the same area mm -hmm. and, and we've seen the same things. I often forget like how close we are to, to, to Drake well and, and the start of the oil. I wouldn't even say revolution uh, industry really. Yeah. It, it, it just, it's gotten so much worse, dude. We're bleeding the earth dry and that all started not very far from where we're originally from. And it's caused nothing but problems. Dude, yeah, I used to so, go I used to go camping down there, man, and we would constantly visit Drake's well. Uh we'd uh do the train, we'd do bike riding yep. along the river. Uh it's a fascinating history, but like I'm glad they're bringing it up. There is a kind of a dark side to the history itself because just the area's not doing well anymore. It's it's kind of like the industry has passed. And it's kind of like you're left in the wake of this thing that happened. Uh, again, it's rich, rich in history, but like at what cost? Correct me if I'm wrong, but th this is Oil City we're talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Where it drinks well. Okay. So like it's literally the name of the fucking town is Oil City. I, I've I've been on that train before, too. Uh, it was like a really cool, like haunted like train ride when I was like in high school. I think I went to. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to we, we you've already said what I'm already going to say, but th this is something that just kind of even though it's there, I feel like it's overlooked a lot. I I can't even remember the last time I thought I thought about Drake's well and an oil city like to this extent. So kudos to Trevor and Ghost of Elhor for bringing up this this type of just this issue that just gets often overlooked dude yeah man uh let's get into the track a little bit i wrote down some notes here from after listening for a few times uh super ominous opening man there's a, a woman who's doing some spoken words uh and then the guitar comes in uh with this line that's just you'll hear it often actually throughout the song but uh mm -hmm. and then the the drums beat like war drums in my mind so just think of this intro happening as it's going. And then the song explodes around like 30 seconds in and the vocals come in. Uh, the guitar continues to carry the song uh, with that. I don't, I don't want to call it a riff because it, uh, you know, a little bit more terminology better than I do. Uh, would, would you say like it's a guitar line that he's doing? Yeah, I, I think more of a like a like a lead line carrying through. OK, yeah, because it's it. Like I said, it carries through, uh, and then, oh man, when the vocals come in, uh, around the 30 second mark, dude, I love the lows that you're hitting Trevor. I uh, love the intensity and, uh, you do certain inflections every once in a while and kind of sprinkle them throughout the song. And I also love how the song then speeds up. So it kind of starts a little slow, explodes, and then really picks up. Uh, we get a little bit of silence, uh, about two minutes in. So it kind of calms down again. Uh, but the song creeps back in with uh, male spoken words uh, with a boom around 2.30. Uh, we're treated with this epic and huge breakdown. So it's just this whole buildup 
to this great moment of the song, this this pinnacle. I equated it to like a volcano exploding and then like the ash cloud consumes everything around it, flattening everything in its path. You know, now that I'm saying this, I I almost kind of think about them tapping the oil well, it exploding, cities prosperous, but then all of a sudden in the wake of it, the city's dying off now. So I wonder if that's what you're going for. If it is, that's kind of cool Yeah, uh, that you kind of put that into music. And then at the end, we're kind of, you know, just kind of left in the wake of the destruction as things settle down and it's got a, a perfect fade out. And uh, it's it's that same guitar, which I love. I, I love that you carried that through. You bring it back. Uh, so it's got like a good recall effect uh, for our brains. Yeah, I I, I love the whole song. Uh, I love the build up. I love the moment. Uh, it's a great moment. I I I want to I want to hype it up for the listener. Like, like bear bear with the song because once you get to that moment, it, it, the payoff is so great. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, you you really hit the nail on the head with all these notes. Uh, the only things that that I would add to it is like you talk about the like the war drums essentially. To me. It, it it almost reminded me of like the heartbeat of the earth, essentially. Ooh, yeah. The two things that really popped into my brain while listening to this, they're not necessarily related, but in my brain they are. One of my favorite movies is There Will Be Blood, which is, uh, man, I think it was like 2000, it's like later 2000s, I would say like 08, 09, maybe. I Don't quote me right. on that. I think you're in the but, right area. But yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson directed it. I love Paul Thomas Anderson. Daniel Day-Lewis, one of my favorite actors. But it's all about the rise and fall of basically like an oil tycoon, which then led me to think about, I remember reading an article when God Forbid's Earth Blood came out, which I think was also 09, so it's got to be around there. They watched that movie, Doc and Dallas Coyle, watched There Will Be Blood, and that sparked like the whole entirety of like, the album earth blood so like that's that's kind of like where i'm at with with it in my mind i wish i could remember like that lead line that you're talking about reminds me of a movie that is it's not that one but it's such a really cool haunting melody that's going on and it's so cool in the midst of the song i fucking wish i could remember what movie that was too damn it uh there's a lot of cool things going on here mm-hmm like a lot of really pertinent things to talk about. There's some really fucking cool vocal techniques, m- like musical techniques going on. It's a really well crafted song. So kudos, boys in Ghost of Elhar. Fucking awesome. We love the track. Hell yeah, dude. And uh, we not only like to talk about the track, but we also like to talk about what they're drinking, what they're jamming. So this is what is fueling the band. So Trevor, he says victory and he's a big fan of their sour monkey. That is a great ass choice. Love it. Great choice. Uh, Nick, he is a fan of vanilla Rubios, uh, which is a tea. Uh, he doesn't drink. That's cool, man. Uh, that's actually a fantastic tea. So I recommend that to anyone. After that, we have Garrett, who is a fan of Michelob Ultra. Then we got Dan, who also doesn't drink, but he's a coffee fan. Hell yeah. Uh, so are we. Yes. Uh, usually, uh, Big we're, fans. usually we're starting our day on a high from the coffee <laughs> and then we're diving to a beer to take us back down on this roller Speed coaster ball, ride. Baby. I know uh, it's probably not good for us, but whatever. Last but not least, we have Adam, who is a fan of Hamburg Brewing, uh, which uh, in particular, they're Berry Berry Sneaky, which is nice. a, gr- a great, <laughs> a great name, dude. I love that. I kind of wonder what kind of beer that is. I'm going to actually look it up now. Uh, that is a sour. That's a fruited sour. Nice. Uh, I should have guessed. Anyway, that that's what's up. Uh, we love, again, we always talk about the diversity in the answers. Thank you for being honest with us, especially if you don't drink. Never a forced situation. Right. So that's cool that you guys provided uh, what you like. After that, uh, we're going to talk about what you're jamming as of late. So uh, we always ask the bands, you know, what bands are you jamming? And then pick a track from that band. Uh, they didn't list names, so this is kind of like we don't know who it's all coming from, but a solid list. Starting off, we have Crown Magnetar with Everything Bleeds. Hell yeah. Next up, we have Psycho Frame with Internal 
Death Trance. Fuck yeah. That EP is up there, dude, for... Love, mm. love that EP. Yeah. Next up, Heaven's Gate. Man, I haven't heard that name in a bit. Uh, they put down the track, and all I loved, I loved Alone. Uh, after Great that, song. It is, dude. I, did they release an EP? Am I, am I wrong about that? Yeah, it was earlier in the year. It's like February or March. Yes. Don't sleep on that band. Next up, we have The Last 10 Seconds of Life. Uh, with play, pain is pleasure. After that, we have uh, fit for an autopsy with their track Hellions. That's a classic. After that, we have Johnny Booth. Hell yeah, we need to get that name out there more. Uh, they're actually just talked about their releasing their album this year in July. So yes, get on it. We're gonna feature their track Crowd Control. They could have picked any track. To be honest yeah. with you, yeah, that's a good one though. <laughs> Hell yeah. After that, uh, this is going to trip me up, but uh, the, band, <laughs> the band name is Kicked in the Head by a Horse. That's the easier thing to say. Uh, the track is, I'm going to try to say this, was a, was a terratasa? So it's a word that you can spell forwards and backwards, and it, it, it spells the same way, but it's W-A-S-I-T-A-R-A-T-I-S-A-W. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, so... You, you have certainly thrown me for a loop on this podcast, but I am going to check out that song. What a song title. Yeah. <laughs> um, after that, uh, we have Static Dress with Courtney Just Relax. It's a solid band. I actually think that band's a little overlooked right now. They're doing great things. I actually think they also just did a remix of this song. They added a vocalist not too long ago. I think last week or so. Oh, nice. But they released the whole album. Go check it out. Next up, we have Sleep Token. We just talked about them a little bit with their track Ascensionism. It's a slower track, but there's a good heavy section in there, I believe. That's kind of how a lot of their songs go, but uh, yeah, this is a favorite among fans, so go check it out. Last but not least, we have Kid Brunswick uh, with Heaven Without You. I don't know about that artist. I Is that like a, a rap artist? Do we know? or I am unfamiliar with Kid Brunswick. I'm going to Google this real quick. I'm so interested. See, you have me looking up the artist already. <laughs> this definitely looks like a rap artist. I, I, I think it is. It could. Oh, oh, alternative indie folk. Okay. Never mind. Not, not even close. <laughs> Forget what I said. Regardless, that's cool. See, you already have me looking up new music. That's what is the whole point of this. Thank you guys again for providing this list for us. Uh, this always kind of like helps us find new bands, if you will, and new music. So it kind of self-serving, but we love it. And we love that you guys uh, switched it up a little bit at the end there. I'm very much going to check out Kid Brunswick when I get off this recording. But I also love to see uh, some of the recent stuff, too, because it lets us know that we're picking some stuff that uh, people are definitely listening to, like Psycho Frame. Go check them out for sure. And Crown Magnetar is leading up to their album. That's the title track, Everything Bleeds. Uh, if you haven't checked out their social media, he is still posting about beans. So it should be everything beans at this point. Yeah. Uh, regardless, uh, go check out the band. They have a link tree uh, that will lead you to all their social media. I have to assume they're probably on Facebook, Instagram, uh, if not Twitter. Uh, Twitter is always TikTok little... as well. Oh, hell yeah. Go check out their TikTok. Go like it. Uh, we'll provide the links in our show notes. I don't know, I'm delaying the inevitable. Go check out their song, Curse Land. I love the meaning behind it. I actually love learning about this now. It makes me appreciate the song more uh, with us both being from that area up north, uh, just outside of Erie. That's where Oil City is. So here you guys go. Curse Land. Check it out. <laughs> 